Vanderbilt football coach Clark Lee joins us today. It's a busy day. I mean, it's not a busy day as a football coach anymore, but it's especially busy day because it's National Signing Day. Thank you for making the time to join us today. Uh, listen, it's great to be with you. My pleasure. And this is a day of celebration, so I'm happy to be able to share it with you. Let's talk about your class on the whole. What are your thoughts on it? Well, th this is a class that, you know, we we started the recruiting process coming off that first year, that two and 10 season. And, um, you know, I think this is a group that, um, you know, really is representative of the the toughness, the character. They understand the uh, work that's ahead of them to, to continue this build. Um, it's a group that we feel like really is in sync with the identity of our program. And, um, you know, we 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 went off what we knew about these guys, um, measurements, speed, length, you know, that um, gets us excited, not just about where they are, where they're positioned to be in the fall, but also how this group grows into being a, a, a group that can help impact, you know, our play in, in, in the SEC. So it, we're excited. I, you know, obviously there was a core that they were with us early. And then, you know, over the course of the summer and season, we were able to add some parts to that and finish with some um, some guys that we were able to flip there at the end. So um, excited and and anxious to get to work. And obviously, I think today marks also that that tipping point to where, you know, the focus becomes January and the team that returns. And there's just so much to be energized about as we as we look to take the next step here. What do you think you got better the most with this class? Well, I mean, if you look at just the the um, on the offensive side, I mean, you know, we 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 feel really strongly about the O line group. I mean, we know that the game in the SEC is won in the trenches, and you know, this is you know sometimes in, in the line of scrimmage, you're, you're looking at um, you know kind of a developmental process that takes a year or two, but but certainly we feel like we got big and um, you know we got guys with high ceilings, and to us, a group that has the attitude and the edge that is going to allow us to win up front in this league. Um, and then you look at the skill positions we added uh, too, right? With um, the the receiver group where we feel like we got some really talented, you know, three really talented players that, that are fast and athletic. Um, and then yet the running back position as well. You know, we needed, we had a need. I think the conversation we were having around the running back room was, you know, how to, how to best approach, you know, um, what we felt like was the need for some, you know, immediate, you know, depth and, and some competition in the room. And there were conversations around, um, you know, how we, how we use the transfer portal for that. But we, we found three really good high school backs and SETI and AJ and then Diego, we added late that we feel like can be game changers. SETI's been with us for a while. AJ was, committed to Colorado and then um, flipped to us after a visit, you know, and then with Diego, we, you know, we have, we have track times, we have, you know, documented speed. We had, we have size and toughness um, and we're excited to develop those guys in that room. Um, again, with the receiver position, uh, Dram Parrish and London Humphreys guys that, you know, bring some size and length, but also athleticism and skill. And then Junior Cheryl being the Mr. Tennessee here, we feel like it's a guy that can come in and and make an immediate impact and, you know, a playmaker that we can get the ball to. Um, and that though Cam Johnson in that too is a skill player. You know, he's a tight end, but this is a guy who is 6'5", 205 pounds right now. We're going to have to build his frame out. But what he's shown is that he can be a matchup issue on the perimeter. And I think when you talk about a team that's built through a physical run game that now has, you know, receiver skill that can – take the top off and take some shots and you got a big target that can win in the red zone like that you're 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 looking really good uh, as far as just the progress on the offensive side um you know defensively it was we we, we kind of you know spread throughout I mean we added some pieces up front and in the core that we're excited about obviously Martel Hyde at corner um, we think is a big addition um and so you know excited about him and and all that he he brings and then Jalen Gilbert was a safety that we we flipped from Washington State there uh, later in the process that is like a really good fit for us and again we're, we're looking for documented speed and length and attributes that we know we can develop here um, we feel like we got that and the good news is we've created some room on this roster where now we can 
you know, we don't have to be done here at the early signing period. We can kind of through winter and spring, keep track of, you know, where there are some needs that we need to continue to fill. And we can look uh, to do that, um, you know, um, in a way that fits us through the transfer portal. So I think there's a lot to be excited about. I don't think we're done shaping this roster quite yet, but um, certainly feel like today was, was a great step for us in the right direction and a lot to be um, excited about. Uh, you hit on a couple things I wanted to ask you about. You hit on a lot of track times there. I know speed has been a big emphasis the last couple of classes. Who is the fastest guy in this class? Well, I mean, I, I you know, we got a lot of depends really- on what time we're we're talking yeah, about. That's right. Too. I mean, I, I, yeah. I think when you when you look at, um, you know, just when you talk about London Humphreys, you're talking about someone who is a you know a dynamic runner. You know, I think with London. We saw that in our initial e- eval, which was the summer of 21 uh, with him. And and we're excited about his, you know, his skills. I think he was still learning the receiver position, um, you know, and, and just having someone that, you know, can can outrun the coverage is can create an advantage for you on offense. Um, seeing him develop receiver skills through the summer and the fall was exciting and I still think we're early in um, on his process, but we we have a lot of fast athletic guys. I would say that London probably is, is, you know, one at the top of that list. And um, you know, some, some of the most fun I had um, in evaluation was watching some of these guys play basketball, you know, between Cam Johnson and Duran Parrish. I mean, they're just some really good athletic, um, you know, you learn a lot about spatial awareness and about, um, toughness and that kind of one-on-one mindsets. Um, you know, you don't always want to go watch a basketball game and see a football player playing basketball. Like <laughs> want to see someone with some skills. Um, and, uh, I was, when I got a chance to watch Duran and, um, when, when I went to Mississippi a few weeks ago and was blown away, I, Joey Lynch likes to play every, every, um, every guy that plays basketball that we recruit, he likes to play him in one-on-one. I told Joe that, He's going to need a, a triple triple ankle tape before he gets on the court with Durant. Um, so, yeah. you know, a lot to be excited for there. Again, those things translate. It doesn't always mean there's an immediate impact, but you see the the foundational skills that we can we can build off of, and I'm excited to do that. Your running back group, it, interesting watching those guys on tape. Benson has got an interesting style. He doesn't always look like he's he just kind of glides, uh, and and you look up and he's behind everybody um you got a i think a one of the i can't remember alexander was the shifty guy i thought when i watched mm-hmm. him on film uh and then you got a pass catcher maybe he's your third guy almost looked like a guy that you could play in the slot if you needed to three distinctly different well i mean not always distinctly different but i saw some different things when i watched film uh what's your running back room look like when it's all said and done as you head into fall with what those guys bring and what you've already got. Yeah. You know, when, when you're obviously SETI will be with us here in, um, in January. So that'll be a, an opportunity for him to get um, acclimated and, and, you know, just like, um, you know, Jaden did a year ago, at, you know, at the receiver position, but just establish himself as a part of our offense um, through the winter and spring. Yeah. I, I feel like we we've added a young crop there that, that, Certainly, we're going to count on to impact um, next season. You know, we want we want those guys on the field. We feel like, you know, um, Cheeks and Chase, um, you know, provide guys that have had obviously extensive playing time. Chase, you know, redshirted this year, but was able to get a bunch of touches. Cheeks, you know, has been um, as a guy that's flashed for us and I think is looking for um, an opportunity to take on a lead role that, you know, he's going to look to earn uh, through the winter and spring. We're excited for that. Um, you know, Dylan Betts Polly is still a guy that, you know, seemed to come on for us in in his role um at the end of last season, but can be can serve as a big back. But you know, there there's some pieces that are in place um uh, there currently. Obviously, the addition of these guys, I think, rounds the room out. Um, we wanted to find players that we felt like when the play was blocked up, that there was an ability to make a vertical cut, hit the accelerator, and score touchdowns. And um, you know, that was something that at times last year, we felt like we, 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 we lacked that ability to, um, get through the second and third level and score. 
um, we felt like we we established a physical run game and and um, that started in our play at the line of scrimmage and certainly the play at the running back position as well. But uh, finishing this group out, this class, um, the way we did was important to us in terms of setting a course for the future. And we're excited about that. And, and like I said, I, you know, um, you know, there was opportunity or there was thought of, of maybe, you know, um, looking at, at taking a transfer rather than going going for the three high school players. But we felt like those skill sets were distinct. And it, to me, especially where we are heading into year three here. I still believe that the best formula for us is to develop people in our systems, um, in, in our weight room, in our culture, in our environment. And, um, you know, there, there, there were three guys there that we felt like fit us. And to me, it was it was too good to pass up on and really proud of the way the staff rallied and, and finished the class off. Yeah, A.J. Newberry was the third guy. I don't know yep. why I blanked on his name. I think he, he caught a lot of balls, didn't he, in high school? Yep. He's a he's a, a guy that it's, it's he's multifaceted. And so, yeah, uh, we're um, yeah, we're 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 excited to have him. So I hear you saying that when you got Benson, that probably closed the door on getting a transfer back. Is that a good way to read that? Yeah, we're, we're you know, we we want to <clears throat> we think we finally positioned this roster to where, you know, it was hard. The challenge was obviously coming in is is, <clears throat> you know, um, you, you inherit a recruiting class in that first year and, and obviously a roster, but you, you all also then have, um, you know, COVID years tacked on. And so yeah. you can create a log jam and we needed to jostle some, some room, both for our young players that we want to see progress on the field, but also to, to add young talented players in this class. Um, and then, you know, have the flexibility um, yeah, I don't know that the first win signing window is is necessarily um, the most conducive for us in terms of um, adding transfers, but certainly we're going to keep an eye on that and just address positions where we feel like we have need. We'll know more about the running back room through the spring, but right now we feel good um, with both who's returning and who we're adding there. There are going to be some other areas where I think we're going to feel like we need to add a couple pieces, and that's where we'll put our energy with respect to to the transfer market. Yeah, and so those areas would be what and would there be one area where you may be looking more for a transfer than you are a late signee? I think I think at this point, I mean we'll, we'll keep a pulse on what the what the high school um market looks like and certainly there're going to be talented players still available. We 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 just want to be, you know, as as we kind of approach 85, we, we want to be careful not to not to look to just add um, for the sake of adding I think it's got to be um, a player that we feel like addresses a need you know when you when you're when you're recruiting a transfer you, you don't you don't necessarily want to recruit a transfer that is a depth player um, so um, we're going to use the winter and spring I think I think what we have right now is the ability offensively to be flexible um, you know I think we feel like we've we both return receiver skill and we've added receiver skill and so maybe an opportunity to shift from being a 12 personnel team to to having a, a you know a little more spread component to it um but we we have to see you know those guys kind of develop through the winter and spring and see where we are um i don't feel the need to rush into certainly um you know um you know talking about where those positions of need are i think i want to see the the pieces that we have returning i want to see their performance and their development certainly those guys are going to get better um, across the board and as we go through you know we'll have we'll have a a pulse of what's out there and then you know as we as we kind of narrow in on that second window um you know look to address the things that we learn about our team through winter and spring to say this is where we can we can best use the help Pass rush is an area where you have been trying to get better. I know you signed Evan Herman to directly impact that. Um, you know, sometimes obviously your coverage and other things have a play in that. But do you feel like you guys got better in the area of, of pass rushing with this class? Yeah, and I think we, there's still um, a couple of pieces that um, you know uh, I'm not sure that I can comment on at this point, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, that are to come that I feel like address that, you know, um, I think also 
with respect to pass rush, we feel like we played with some young players and even, you know, gosh, I mean, like I look at Christian James and Nate Clifton and those guys that have, have been with us now for two seasons. And, and I still see them as uh, early in on their, on their pass rush development. So some guys mm-hmm. have really natural skills. I think though you have to look at rushing the passer, just like, you know, a hitter looks at, you know, hitting the curveball or, you know, your, your, your opportunities to get sacks are limited based off passing plays. And so capitalizing on those opportunities is about, you know, in the moment being able to access the skills you need to, to win. Now, certainly that's a, a speed component, a takeoff, but you know, the nuances of, of disrupting hand placement of going speed to power of countering the, the set you're getting from the offensive lineman, those things to me, are our skills and that takes feel and some people have that inherently some people have to learn it and so just like a hitter learns to hit in different zones or different parts of the plate i think a defensive lineman learning pass rush um you know you compound your reps and you get better um and so i expect the guys on our roster to improve i think you're dead on that it's an error we have to be able to shorten the down you know when you shorten the down you you inevitably cover up mistakes behind you which is um, you know, it's not always just about sacks. Sometimes just getting the pressure and getting the quarterback off his mark. I do see improvement there. I also think we have some young players um, that played for us as true freshmen this past year that will help in that respect too. And we'll be excited to get a guy like Miles Capers back into the yeah. fold too, that we feel like can have the ability to to be that for us. So, you know, we, we, we feel like we've strengthened there. We feel like we'll develop the roster that we have but certainly we've added some pieces that are 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 in in the mix now to to help us shorten the down. Yeah, and I know this is a signing day episode, but while I'm at it, I wanted to ask you about Capers, how that rehab is going. And of course, Davion Davis wasn't necessarily a pass rusher, um, but he was a key component of your interior line, didn't play a lot. How are those guys looking health-wise coming into to I guess spring practice here in a couple of months? Yeah, yeah, Davian should be f- full go, um, and so we, I'm, I'm expecting him to have a great winter and and spring. Miles will will uh, be working his way back. Um, I would expect to see him at, in some capacity in the spring. Um, I don't, I don't think that it'll be, you know, uh, where he's able to go full, but I think he'll be able to get out there and, and do some things. Maybe it's individual, maybe it's some non contact work. Um, both both guys. I mean, obviously, I, th- I feel like Davian's through, you know, his rehab and recovery. Miles is 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 uh, on a positive trend, and you know, excited uh, for him to get back with us. I mean, he he was a, again a, a developmental player in year one that that showed some flashes on the field. Um, that uh, we feel like has all the tools that you know he needs to 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 play on the edge and to be a pass rusher and to be someone that can wreak some havoc defensively. Impact players, I know that's always a question. One where I think you would need somebody to make an impact early is kicker, and and you got Brock Taylor out of Knox. We'll talk about him for a moment. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a guy that came to camp and, um, you know, and proved himself in camp. And anytime you have that as the case, you know a lot more about the people that you're taking than you don't know, right? We've seen him live. We know um, he's competitive. He's tough. Um, you know, just being on Zoom with him this morning, he's eager. You know, he's he's he wants to be here. He's excited to be here, um, and so we're anxious to get him here and and um, and you know see where he is. Obviously, that position becomes critical, especially with where we are in in the build here, where you know we're we know we're going to have to win some close games, and you know this is you know we want to we want to aim towards postseason play, and uh, we we came up short on that goal this year, but. Um, you know, feel like we could be positioned to do that next season. And so um, contribution at the kicker position becomes critical. And, uh, you know, we'll be excited to get him here and, and, and cut him loose. All right. NIL is a hot topic, and I've, I've saved a few of these for last. Um, do you feel like you lost on any recruits because of NIL? And is that a hindrance at all for you guys or is it an asset? Well, you know, I, I think – 
certainly. I mean, I, you know, there's people are going to make decisions based off, um, you know, everyone has different um, value systems or different principles that guide their process. And, um, you know, that's never, NIL will never be a lead uh, here. Just um, it's not, it's not, that's not congruent with what Vanderbilt is. It's, it's an area that we have to participate in and we have to make sure there are no compromises here for our players. And that means that we're, efforting um in this space uh to uh to allow our players to to earn market value and to um experience all the positive benefits of nil which we we, we support all the way um you know the, obviously you know i, I i'm not going to comment on you know the i mean i think i think the spectrum of nil right now we would be on for like six hours if we went through every yes. strategy I, I think what you see is um, there are certainly guys that are making decisions based off those opportunities first. Yeah, you know, I think that sets the course for um, transactional relationship. Um, this mm -hmm. is going to be a program that's about transformation. I still believe there's, again, principles and team building that you need to pay attention to. And, and so you ask, is it a hindrance or an advantage? I think that ultimately it's an advantage so long as we are positioning ourselves to be competitive in that space. Mm -hmm. Being competitive doesn't mean that we resemble any one of our peers. It just means that we don't have our players compromising on what this student athletes, athlete experience is now. And we can't look at it anymore and say that um, this isn't a part of it. Um, you know, it's certainly a part of it. I think for so long, um, you know, when you talked about student athlete experience, you're saying a positive coaching environment, a place where you're challenged and you're supported, a place where you have a sense of belonging. And then, you know, you feel like um, you're advancing as a player every day. We also here feel like education is a huge part of that experience. And we want to make sure that we're providing access um, to that as well. We, this is our, I just got a word that, you know, we're, we're um, our second consecutive semester as a, as a program with a, with a 3.0 GPA, like these kids are learning how to take, the values and principles that we preach as a program, they're taking them to campus and um, having pride in everything that we do. That's that's a that's such a great thing in terms of the environment and the experience we're providing. So now you have to say a part of that also is uh, name, image, and likeness, and how we position ourselves in that realm has to um, mirror again the values and principles that represent Vanderbilt University. It can never be transactional uh, because I don't want it to be, but it can be something that is an asset that improves the quality of life of our players. And again, most importantly to me, where they look at it and says, you know, I don't need to go anywhere else to, to be able to maximize or optimize all these areas. This may be the last one we've got time for, because I know you've got a hard out in about two minutes here. Um Based on what you're told from the compliance office, what can you tell recruits about NIL opportunities? Can you offer guarantees or specific dollar amounts? And and look, NIL, this was supposed to be about endorsements and things, but it's turned into to something else a lot of places. Um, you know, a lot of people would call it just flat out pay for play. Um, how do you think the guidance you guys get compares to what you're seeing other places? Well, listen, people are going to people are going to approach this in whatever ways that um, they, they feel is appropriate. In the end, what 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 it's not supposed to be is inducement. So the idea yeah. that, you know, we're we're convincing people to come here based off NIL deals that only exist here. And, and also, um, like you said, pay for play, you know, based off your performance, you get. A certain amount of money that, that that is those are things that aren't in the spirit of the legislation and you know ultimately where that exists you know you you would expect over time there to be accountability for that um you know it's just it's it's a uh, you know the waters are murky and it's it's a yeah. tough time to find the, the the exact footing what's important to me is that i always keep an eye on the program that i'm building and what it's going to look like in 10 years and in in that sense um, you know, th there are there are people and families out there that when they come into our environment, again, this is still before we have the state of the art facilities and the stadium and all those things, 
they come in and they find they they come into contact with uh, men and women who are going to support their sons, who are going to um, deploy expertise and to build in the experience, the football experience. They see a campus where we have a close knit community and and um, and their sons will be known by name and and a life changing opportunity. Um, you know, look, I'm 41 and, you know, I feel like I'm just now stepping into what God's purpose is for me. I mean, as a husband and as a father and as the leader of this program where I have a hundred plus uh, young men that are looking to me every day to model uh, the things that they're going to look to to replicate in their lives too. So I don't want to compromise the the our player's ability to, to have this moment in life for something that teaches them about transaction and about their worth based off a dollar amount. Now it just, it cuts against the grain. That doesn't mean we're not adjusting, yeah. adapting, right? I understand yeah. strategically what yeah. this landscape calls for too. And that's important because the 10 year vision is that, you know, this is a successful program that we're only recruiting players in 10 years that know Vanderbilt as successful. That That's critical to this point. So we have to, as a university, as a department, as a program, find where that balance is, make sure that we're positioning ourselves in the market to be competitive, um, and yet never compromising on the things that are most important to us. And that is the idea that our players' earning potential should never be at its highest point from 18 to 22. As a Vanderbilt graduate, yeah. you know, you, you need to have, you know, you, you're working for those NIL deals in in 20 years. And um, that comes in, you know, uh, being competitive for the rest of your life and certainly competitive and living with impact and purpose beyond your time as a football player. Hey, Clark, thank you so much for your time. I know today is super busy for you um, and you made time for us, which we appreciate. Um, congratulations Always, on your class. Yeah, well, it, yeah. thank you. Likewise, congratulations on your class. Best of luck. And I'm sure we'll catch up with you between now and uh, spring ball. Sounds great, man. Good to see you. You take good care. All right. Merry Christmas. Take care. Thanks, Chris.